start. All right, what we're going to do right now is we're going to turn off the main control valve. And we'll do that by taking the handle off of the post indicator, putting it on the top, and turning it until we can't turn it anymore. And it should say shut right in there, and it does. Okay, so we've turned off the control valve. Now, we need to go inside and open the main drain and let the water come out of the two-inch main drain. This is the sprinkler riser. Yeah. I'm going to open the main drain now, and we're going to drain the water to the outside of the building. I'm going to screw in the 2x1 adapter. There it is. The adapter nipple. Go ahead and turn on the vacuum. drawn in. There's a pump inside that will automatically turn on when the water gets high enough and it'll come out the garden hose. So the vacuum keeps itself continuously empty. We just take an ordinary three-quarter inch garden hose and connect it to the discharge on the back of the vacuum. This is a very common hose, and there's no special hoses required to use this. And that way, when you discharge water from the vacuum, you can discharge it in a place where it needs to go. We're outside right now, we can let it go any place. But if we go inside, we might want it to discharge in a janitor's sink. See, the vacuum is going to keep itself empty of water and it's going to keep a continual vacuum going inside the building. So we're going to leave this alone and we're going to go in the building now and we're going to change the sprinkler head. Okay, we're going to unscrew this head and we're going to let the vacuum do its job and lift the water away from the opening. And there you are. Now what you have is a continuous vacuum sucking the water away from this opening and emptying the branch line. Now the branch line overhead runs downhill and that means there's trapped water at the next lower head. It's an ideal situation to just go ahead if we're changing head and go ahead and undo that head. But having this vacuum just pull this water away.